So moving to Ivory Coast to chase a World Cup dream was always going to be high risk. And if we lose today, I think this adventure's over after two games. So let's remind you what we're up against. We haven't played any additional fixtures since you saw our last episode when we began our tenure in charge of L'Elephant by travelling out to Montevideo and losing to Uruguay, and pretty unimpressively so. Well, now we've got four World Cup qualification games on the spin, and the first of them is absolutely vital. We're going to be taking on Mali at home, and Mali hold a slight advantage over us in the group from the two games that were played prior to us taking over. Whereas we beat Central African Republic but could only draw with our old employers Benin, Mali were able to beat both of those clubs. So they are on six points whilst we are just behind on four, but only the top team is going to progress to the next qualification stage. If we win today, it would mean that we would climb to the top of the group. I think we're going to have to do something against Mali in the away tie as well. We've got to get this home one done first of all. If we were to just draw today's game, I still think we have a chance of qualifying, but we'd absolutely have to beat Benin and the Central African Republic and then beat Mali away in order to qualify. With that all in mind, I've shaken the squad up a little bit since we played Uruguay, and I've also put out the call for some dual nationality players that might want to represent us. Unfortunately, a long line of players have all completely ruled out switching their allegiance to represent Ivory Coast, including Ryan Sessignon, the former Spurs player. He's absolutely not interested at all. And we put the call out to player after player after player. And they all decided that even though they are approaching their 30th birthday, they think the call from France will still come. And so they won't want to represent the nation of Ivory Coast. You never know. If we could qualify for a World Cup and we go a calling again shortly before that finals tournament, some of them might just be a little bit more open to persuasion. But certainly for the qualifiers, they weren't interested at all. But we've still brought fresh blood into the squad. And I'm also thinking we're going to change the formation from the last game as well. In our previous game, we played a flat back four with a midfield five and a flat central midfield three and that lone front man. But I'm thinking we're going to do away with the wide players. That doesn't mean we're necessarily going to do away with all the players that were playing as wide players, but I'm thinking of switching them to forwards instead. So now I'm thinking that we're going to go into today's game against Mali with a 4-4-2, but laid out in this diamond shape. It means we're going to be bringing in two new personnel into the center of midfield. And we're also going to be asking a couple of players that appeared against Uruguay to fulfill new roles for us. So let's take you through the players that are now going to be playing who we won't have encountered in our previous game. Starting over at left back in the previous game, I had Jonathan Panzo playing out there. I think we learned he's probably more of a centre half than a rampaging fullback. So instead, we're going to play this Silas Naka, who is okay, I guess. He's 30 years old. He's quick. Acceleration's not brilliant. He can cross a little bit. He can tackle occasionally, but I think he's just a little bit more of an attacking option than playing Panzo. And then we're also going to make some changes in midfield. Before, we had Odilon Kasunu playing in a central midfield area. Instead, we're going to ask him to drop back just a nudge and instead play as a halfback for us. And then ahead of him, We've got two new players that we've brought into central midfield that I did not even have in the squad originally when we took on Uruguay. The first of those is going to be a ball-winning midfielder. It's another veteran, and I've called some players into the squad that originally I thought might be past their best. I think it might turn out that they're better than what we could have played that might be younger. So Ibrahim Sangara plays for PSV in Eredivisie really sure why I overlooked him to begin with because physically he's still very strong. He likes to play the killer balls, but we're going to ask him to tear around the park a little bit more as a ball winning midfielder. We're going to have to be careful because he does like to dive into the tackles, but his work rate and teamwork and bravery and aggression all look really good. And the agility and the strength are all fabulous as well. The tackling is 15 
So I think Sangari might be a person that might be able to stiffen up the midfield for us. And then for a little bit of intelligence and craft alongside him, we're going for Angelo Fulgini, an experienced midfielder, 33 years old this time, but still playing for Sporting out in the Portuguese top division. The only standout attribute that we've got is probably the natural fitness. But at 33 years old, I think we'll probably need that in him. But the passing and the vision are both 14 and the flair is 13 as well. So playing in this little central midfield role as a deep line playmaker, hopefully Paul Genie might be able to create some chances for us. He likes to try the old killer balls. He has some other traits that might be useful as well, such as playing one twos and also looking for some long range passes. I'm hoping that he might be able to ping the ball around a little bit and he's going to have three players in front of him that laid out differently to how we lined up against Uruguay, starting with Hamed Traore. We did not get a good performance when playing him as a central midfielder. Now we're going to move him into the number 10 slot. We're going to experiment with a track artista, not a role that I'm particularly used to using, but I'd like him to be a really roving, attacking influence moving wherever he wants on the pitch to pick up the ball and try and wreak havoc. He likes to run with the ball. He likes to set at the front players with the killer balls as well. He's going to run with the ball often. He's got dribbling of 15, agility of 18. He's two-footed. The flair and the off the ball and the technique all look really strong. And I think with three fairly cautious midfielders behind him in this system, we might be able to accommodate a player that might not track back quite so much, but we're still going to have two players in advanced positions ahead of him as well. One of them is going to be Ahmad Diala, who played as a winger last time, but we're now going to move them to a central striker, but one that's going to be slightly withdrawn and again is going to try and drift off markers into pockets of space. And the other is going to be Datro Fofana. We're going to ask him to use that pace and that acceleration to try and get past opposition defenders, get on the end of chances, and hopefully fire us to a historic victory against Mali today. We've got some good players in our squads. We've got some players playing for some of the top sides in Europe, but so too do Mali. And if we show you today's scout report on our opponents, you'll see exactly the size of the task that our boys are going to be up against. For today's game, we're traveling from Ivory Coast over the border to Mali and to the capital Bamako, where we have a crucial game at the National Stadium. Mali are packed with talent such as Bournemouth striker Seko Koita, Aston Villa midfielder Mohamed Kamara, as well as the skipper still with Brighton, Eve Basuma. The squad will be marshalled by coach Salif Diallo and he'll be hoping to get one over on us as Mali take on Ivory Coast in our World Cup qualifier. OK, maybe this isn't a must-win game, but it's certainly a can't-lose game. And to that end, we're into the highlights pretty early and Ahmad is in. He's seen the whites of the keeper's eyes. Unfortunately, he's blasted it over the bar. That could have been a dream start for us. The stands are hardly packed for this one. I'm not sure the fans think that we can qualify for this World Cup. They've stayed away on force as we have yet another 1v1 chance with the keeper. And we've just rolled it back to him. My goodness, the highlights really are coming early. And it's Marley that have the ball. We have one other piece of news to update you on, by the way. We still have Sebastian Haller. Yes, the Sebastian Haller knocking around. He's 35 years old now. As Datro Fafana does put us into an early lead. We needed that one. And I was about to say, if our front two don't fire in this game, we've got Sebastian Haller, 35 years old, on the bench, back in the squad. We left him out against Uruguay because he's decided he's retiring from football at the end of the season in June. And this World Cup that we're hoping to qualify for begins in July. That would seem an odd time to call time on your career if you're about to represent your nation at a World Cup. So we left him out of the original squad. However, as a target man, I still think he could be pretty valuable. So I've got him on the bench for today's game just in case we need him. We've got a set-piece delivery now to send into the box. Fujini's going to be on it. It's headed clear. Datro, the goal scorer, chases after it. Triore, the Trek Artista, gets it out to Fulgini again. 
we're looking a lot better than we did in the Uruguay game. Maybe it's the change of personnel. Maybe it's the change of shape. Maybe it's just the fact that Mali are not quite as strong as Uruguay are. But we have made a strong start. We've got a free kick now that we've curled in. And I think either the keeper got a stray hand to it or it's cracked against the woodwork. I feel like we are deserving of a second goal. 38 minutes are now played. We are coming forward again. Oh, we've beaten in the air, but the ball has fallen to Traore on the edge of the box. He's got Singo, the right back up. And we have got that second goal. We are still seven minutes from half time. And the two players we had playing out wide against Uruguay are looking a lot better now that we've moved them into central areas. And I'm not too disappointed with how the Trek Artista is playing either. Traore has been heavily involved. He got the ball to Singo and he's rolled in an unmissable chance. Those first halves go, that's not too bad an opening period. We're 2-0 in the lead. Our opponents have only had a couple of shots in the entire match. Let's see if we can keep this up in the second half. So our players responded well to the halftime team talk. We gave them some praise and told them what a great first half they'd had. We're looking for them to try and add a third goal in the second half and then we might be able to relax a little bit. On 65, maybe 70 minutes, I think we'll make our first couple of changes. We're racing through to that time now. It's been a pretty uneventful second period so far. We've got all the way to 69 minutes. We're going to bring on a couple of substitutions just to freshen up areas of the pitch. So the first change we're making is in defensive midfield, and we're going to bring on Sheffield United's Adamo Nagolo because our current defensive midfielder wasn't playing very well. He was averaging 6.7. We've also noticed that our star man, Wilfred Singo, has taken a knock. He says he can play on, but his condition illustrates otherwise. So I think we're going to bring on Kofi Kawo to play in his place. And fingers crossed, neither of those will weaken the team too much. I still feel like we could do with a third goal just to make things a little bit more comfortable. And I think our final change may well also be in central midfield. We don't have long left. I think we're going to make that change now. Both of our central midfielders are looking a little tired, in particular the ball winner Sangari. So instead, we're going to make another little change. We're going to bring on Abui Kouassi, who plays for Hank in Belgium, another experienced player, the wrong side of 30. But when you're only staying for one year, I guess it doesn't matter too much. We've got another highlight on 87 minutes. If they were to score here, we would start to get a little bit nervous. Bissouma has blasted one towards goal. The Brighton man went close there. We've got away with that effort. It's highlight time again. We're now into stoppage time. Our goalkeeper collects the ball. We've got four minutes off stoppage time. And we're not a minute into it yet. So this looks like a proper highlight. We've sent the ball long. We've managed to win it and we've got Datro in and he has dinked home what is going to be the icing on top of a very pleasing cake. We have had a pretty important game here and the players have really stepped up. If we could do the same again against Benin and beat the Central African Republic by the time we play the last game in this group against Mali, you never know, we might only need a draw in order to progress to the second qualification stage, 3-0, and we've not been unduly troubled by our opponents. It gives us hope for when we have to go out to Mali. We've made all of our substitutions, and yet our right back has just got injured. I don't think it will allow us to make another. It absolutely won't. We're going to have to finish the last few seconds with 10 men, but no matter, we are going to be top of the group. We've beaten our closest rivals, 3-0, I think we could say that is a good afternoon's work by our players. That victory makes our World Cup dream start to look slightly more achievable. We've still got some important games to go and we're going to bring you back next episode for the crucial game in this group. But whilst you're waiting for that, we're going to leave you another video that you might want to check out. Because if you're searching for a club for your next football manager adventure, this video is going to be packed with ideas.